Yes, Eric's going to talk about being up 2-0 now and how big an advantage is, is this? I mean, um, at least we know if, if things don't go well in L.A., we, we're coming back. So that's, that's good. Um, you know, we played two good games today. Tough one, you know. Um, they pitch well. Um, we, we put some good at-bats. We pitch extremely well. But David was amazing. And then the bullpen did what they've been doing um, during October, and uh, now we're up to a and Ron, second row, or Pete, second, third row to your left. Alex, how much How much do you think uh, Price's start in the LCS kind of led to the start tonight? Nah, um, you know, he, he's been throwing the ball well. He had the tough one against the Yankees. But um, the first start against Houston, um, George hits, you know, a broken bat double, and then we don't finish a play, and then Marwin hits a home run. But... Um, he, he threw the ball extremely well. Then you know, he pitched great in Houston, and today he was amazing. Um, you know, he was missing his spots by not much. He was pitching to the edges of the strike zone. Good fastball, good two-seamer, good changeup. And um, like I said, you know, um, like I said in, in, in Houston, um, I get it, you know, the numbers and all that, but this guy is a great pitcher. He's been one of the best pitchers in the big leagues for a while, and he cares. And, uh, you know, in a personal note, I'm very, very proud of him, very happy for him that now, you know, he can keep pitching. Like he said the last time, you know, there's not going to be questions in spring training about uh, David Price in October. You know, he, he beat the Houston Astros in Houston. He beat the Dodgers here in Dodger State, um, in Fenway Park. So um, I'm happy for that, you know, because uh, he deserves it. This guy works. He cares about his teammates. And uh, like I said before, he's one of the best pitchers in the big, league, in the big leagues. And the second row on your left, Ron. After watching it up close all year from the dugout, what makes Fenway Park such an advantage for you guys? <laughs> it's... Uh, it's a passion the, the, the fan base has. Uh, that's something that uh, I was looking forward when, when, uh, when Dave called and offered me his job. Um, I know this is a special place. Um, they, they, they live baseball 24 hours, seven days a week. And, and that's, that's a cool part about this job, this team. You know, uh, We show up every day. And if you need motivation, you, know, you go out there at 6.45 to stretch and run. I lived it when I play here. They'll get you going. Uh, one thing that has caught my attention in October is when whoever is starting, they, they walk to the bullpen around 6.30, 6.35, or 7.30, uh, whatever, half hour before the game starts. You know, standing ovation, and, and the fans, they, they go nuts. And uh, I think that's, that's really cool. And they were into every pitch. Uh, two strikes, they stood up. Um, Madsen came in and and he was wild and then and, and they were <coughs> screaming and they were loud. Um, sometimes we take them for granted, honestly. But uh, they show up yesterday. They were amazing. They show up today. They were great. And um, I know there's going to be a few people in in Dodger Stadium that they're going to be cheering for us too. Well, we travel well, so it should be fun. And we'll stay there with Ian. Alex, how big has uh, has Nate been uh, in the eighth inning the last two nights, and how does this kind of impact how you use him in in LA? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Rick is starting game three. Never know. Um, like I've been saying all along, we're all in every day, and uh, if we feel that there's a chance to to close the door with them, we'll use them. Um, you know, the way it's mapped out is is Rick on game three and. Maybe Nate game four, but Nate might come in in the eighth again. And uh, if we have a chance to to be up 3-0 with him on the mound and Craig, we'll do it. And then we'll figure out game four. Well, um, that's the beauty of the playoffs. It's, uh, it's actually fun because um, you know you map out everything over 162 games, and you give guys rest and take care of guys. But now it's like pedal to the metal. and. Uh, Whatever happens that day, we'll take it and you know, 
he's been amazing for us. Well, on the first row on the left. Hey, Alex, um, going back to Price, given his history in the postseason, which you touched on, but also just his history in Boston the last couple of years, what do you think it means for him to kind of have this moment, this game, sort of, you know, the fans cheering him as he walks off the field? What, what, does, it mean? what does that mean to him as a person? you got to ask him that. Um, one thing for sure, I trust the guy. We trust him. We love him. Um, since day one, when we had that meeting in uh, Fort Myers with Chris, Sandy, Jackie, and David, um, one thing I told them, you know, is moving forward. Um, uh, they did an outstanding job for a few years, you know, winning the division and all that, but um, you know, it was struggling in October, and um, I'm the new guy. So uh, I was like, hey, man, I, I respect everybody that was here. I, I really, you know, appreciate, you know, what they did for me when uh, John and when he was here in 07, 08. Um, but we have to move forward. Whatever happened last year, um, it really doesn't matter. You know, we, we're here for a reason, and um, he's been outstanding. He's been outstanding. Um, I'm very happy for him. He, he was amazing tonight, and um, he was into it, too. So I don't think he liked the fact that I took him out in the six, I tell you that. Uh, fourth row. Alex, ningún equipo ha desperdiciado una, una ventaja de 2 y 0 en la Serie Mundial eh, desde 1996 en 10 instancias. ¿Qué pasa por la mente del dirigente sabiendo que va para la carretera luego de ganar los 5 juegos que ha jugado en la carretera en esta postemporada? No, que lo único que tenemos asegurado es que si no nos sale las cosas bien en Los Ángeles, tenemos un juego 6 aquí. Eso es lo único que tenemos ahora mismo. And Dave Lennon right there. Alex, I think you've scored more than half your runs this postseason with two outs. I know you guys are good at it during the regular season as well. What makes you guys so good at that? And, and how demoralizing is that for another team when you guys can strike like that with, yeah. with two outs? It has to be tough. Um, one thing in the playoffs, and we talked about it before uh, we started, get the leadoff guy out, don't give up uh, two, two out hits or, or runners. And um, We've been doing that to, to the opposition, like you said. Um, putting the ball in play in those situations is very important. Uh, I said it a few days ago, and I'll say it again. Uh, we live in, in an era that 210 with 30 home runs and 70 RBIs is, is acceptable. It's a good season, and uh, we, we don't believe that. You know, there, there are certain situations that a strikeout is, is not just an out. You know, and uh, we ha we put them in play, and, and they did again tonight, and that's why we won the game. Uh, Bill, four us back on your left. Uh, Alex, David has been pretty gracious about, you know, I don't care. I could lose every game that I pitch in the postseason as long as the team wins the World Series. Can this team win the World Series if that happens, or do you need him to, to pitch the way he has been? Good, David. Uh, yeah. David is a huge part of what, what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, he can say all he wants, whatever he, he wants to say, but... Uh, He's important, and we rely on the starters. We do, and uh, you know what he did in Houston and what he did tonight. You know, we needed it. Um, you, know, you can go to a bullpen. Um, you know, it's good to go to the bullpen, but you got to be careful. You know, and uh, when you get six, seven out of your starters, then everything kind of like it's like dom domino f effect. And, like, everything falls into place, and uh, without him going six, it was going to be tough tonight. And to your right, JP. Uh, how close were you to taking David out there in that fourth inning? And what was the key to him uh, going perfect the third time through the order? I mean, the stuff was good the whole night. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, they got good hitters. And, and they, they it seems like they made some adjustments the second time through the lineup. Um, started laying off pitches inside. He wasn't getting that call. Um, he, he kept going to a two-seamer in to the righties. And there were close pitches, but, you know, there were cold balls. and. Uh, it seems like they started looking for off speed down in the zone to change up. Uh, but um, I was close, you know. I mean, we we feel that if we keep them in check there, we we gonna score runs, and uh, he did an outstanding job. Uh, David's ready, so we'll do two more. Buck. Oh no. yeah, Alex, uh, you said a few minutes ago that that David was really into it. Can you? Share some examples of that that we may not have noticed up in the press box. Yeah, I think that's the first time I've seen the whole season when you know he went to the umpire in between innings, uh, in between you know after the third out, and kind of like let him know how he felt about the, the strike zone. Uh, you don't see that often, and uh, when he did that, I was like, okay, cool, you know. And uh, even in the sixth inning, probably he was thinking he was going back in the seventh, 
but you could see him. He got the, the last out, um, and and there was a smile, kind of like, yeah, I got it. I'm good. You know, like I, I'm in control. But uh, by that time, the manager decided to take him out of the game. Thank Did you. Two more quick ones, Marley and uh, and Johnny. Johnny, go ahead. Um, Alex, can you talk about the job Joe Kelly has done the last few Oof. days? I mean, um, so we had that guy early in the season, and then he struggled throughout the middle of the season. In September, he made some adjustments, and, and the stuff started playing again. Uh, but in October, he's been lights out. Um, breaking balls for strikes, good fastball, good changeup. Um, Presses on presence on the mound, and uh, I'm happy for Flacco. The the he he's been you know he's been tested the whole season. Uh, at one point, you know he went from being the guy in the seventh eighth inning to just a guy in, in the bullpen, and now he's back to the equation. And uh, you know when Joe is throwing strikes with all his pitches, he he might be one of the toughest relievers in the big leagues because his stuff is is that good. I'll finish up Marley. Alex, ¿puedes hablar del trabajo que hizo David Price hoy y también del trabajo que hicieron tus relevistas? No, excelente. Eh, atacamos la zona de strike de la manera que lo habíamos planeado antes del juego. Utilizó la parte de adentro del plato contra los derechos, buen cambio y, y los mantuvo en control. Tuvo bases llenas sin out, solamente anotaron una carrera. Uh, hizo, hizo tremendo trabajo el bullpen, excelente. Eh, han hecho el trabajo en octubre. Hemos utilizado distintos lanzadores y todos han hecho el trabajo, así que sumamente contento con el trabajo que hicieron.